Hi again. Tabby Beasley is the kind of woman who stands out in the crowd. She's got bright purple hair, a facial piercing, and has a unique knack for drawing attention to her life's work, making New Zealand a better place for young people in the queer community. Now she's caught the attention of the Queen. Tabby's the first Kiwi to win a special award at Buckingham Palace for her extraordinary leadership. Here's Libby Middlebrook. Happy Love Parade! On a sunny day in the capital, they're out to celebrate pride and progress. I never thought that I would see a day when we could come together as a community and share our fabulousness and be in love for it, I think. But in truth, away from the crowds and colour, the world can still be a cruel place. I've heard some really horrible stories. A young person in a rural area who had um, urine thrown at him at school. The bullying is pretty shocking. Did anything like that ever happen to you? A little bit, yeah. Um, I remember getting a pair thrown at me and being called a gay emo and things like that. But Tabby Beasley has always had a fierce sense of self. Hi! I don't really care, I guess, what other people think of me so much. A bright young leader in the queer community, just 23. We need people like you. <laughs> who's winning extraordinary recognition overseas for her work and her leadership. Tabitha Besley from New Zealand. How do you feel about meeting the Queen? Uh... <laughs> Tabby's the founder of Inside Out, an organisation working to support lesbian, gay, bisexual and transgender youth. The rates of kind of suicide and depression for young people in our community are like really, really high. Um, and that, I think, is all a really big result of that bullying and discrimination in school. Something she experienced for herself growing up in rural New Zealand. I think always as a child, I remember feeling kind of different to everyone else in some way. And Becoming aware age 13, she was attracted to both boys and girls. I don't think it was a very safe place to come out or explore that stuff very much. So I think I just kind of hid it and didn't speak about it for a long time. Even to her mum. Uh, and her first reaction was just that I was far too young to um, know that, which was, yeah, I guess upsetting. But after that, she went on to be really, really supportive. It was at high school Tabby found the freedom she'd been searching for, a support group for queer students where she could be herself. I think that was amazing and I feel so lucky and privileged to have had that experience because... For most young people, that's not their story at all. What is the reality for most kids? Mm, pretty horrible, I think. Simple things like hearing that's so gay over and over in the playground that can, you know, really affect someone's sense of themselves because it's just hearing again, you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong. And that's, you know, that's incredibly isolating. Tabby wants all kids to have what she did, friendship and acceptance, no matter where they go to school. Yeah, so I'm Tabby, um, the National Coordinator of Inside Out. Helping students set up support groups like this one. When I was like year 10 and kind of questioning my sexuality, I felt like there wasn't that much education. What kind of things did you experience? Uh, most of it was um, verbal abuse. It's just kind of shocking now I think about it. I was so young and people at that age were so hateful. Liv is 16 years old and bi-gender. Which means sometimes I feel more masculine, like today, I feel more like Oliver. Um, and sometimes I'll feel like Olivia, which is when I'm feminine. And that can change, sometimes midway through the day, not very often. How accepting have people been of who you are? I have not informed my father yet. Hi, Dad. <laughs> my grandparents, who may be watching this, might be getting a bit of a shock. Now Liv's told them, free to be himself or herself, both at home and at school. It's so cool to hear that they are in a school where they do feel supported and safe and that, you know, they are so lucky to have that. But the sad reality is not all communities and schools are as supportive as this no, particular No, this college. is really rare. <laughs> it's become her passion. Paid for a few hours a week but working full time to raise awareness about bullying through campaigns like the Day of Silence which is where students don't speak for the day to represent the silence that um, lots of our students go through about their identities. Do you think schools need to be doing a better job? Yeah, absolutely. You hear a lot of schools who say, oh, we don't have any gay students here, and that's so not true. If they're not out, it's because your school isn't a safe place for them to be out. Connor McLeod hid his sexuality as a teenager. There was lots of homophobia, just discussion, like, 
that's so gay, faggot, faggot. Until the day Tabby came to speak at his school. When I heard about Tabby, it was the first time I'd heard about people that aren't this straight being talked about positively. It changed his life. A few months after that, I met a boy and I wasn't afraid of what might happen. What was it like coming out to your family? My mum was crying. She was like, I'm not going to have any grand babies. I'm like, so leave me alone, mum. I'm only 16. <laughs> and my dad, he sent me lots of Bible passages and stuff. And like, that was awful. Oh, yeah, these are from a volunteer. So we did You were there? Oh, I'm there. Look, I look cute. Connor and his family, including dad, have come out the other side. He's happy, confident. Now alongside Tabby, volunteering at Inside Out. She's always there every single week doing this work. And that's kind of amazing. She's pretty special. I think so. He's not alone. Last year, Tabby discovered she'd been put up for a special international award. Got the news just before Christmas. A Queen's Young Leader Award. And she won recognised for her exceptional leadership. To me it's really, it's been really important just as a young queer person to be recognised for doing that work. She's been flown to London to visit Buckingham Palace, one of 60 young recipients from around the Commonwealth. I wonder if you'll meet the corgis. Oh, do you have to do a curtsy or anything? Like, how does that <laughs> in any case, Tabby will turn up in her signature spots. How long have you had this obsession? Oh, um, quite a few years at least, <laughs> but there's lots of pictures of me when I was little wearing little polka dots as well so maybe it's just all the way I am. How do you feel about meeting the Queen? Uh, <laughs> I think I'm more excited about meeting all of the other kind of young activists from all around the world. I think that will be like incredible. The days arrived. Tabby joining celebrities and royals at the palace. The Wellington girl with purple hair just this week celebrated as one of the world's finest young leaders. It was really overwhelming. Suddenly it was happening. Tabitha Besley from New Zealand. It was very, very fast, a bit of a blur. But she asked, what work am I doing? And I said that I'm working with the lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender community in New Zealand. And she said, that's wonderful. <laughs> um, and then it was moved along. <laughs> A swift but proud moment. I couldn't believe that I was saying those words, talking about the LGBT community to her, because I know that's something she's been silent on for quite a long time, so just to be actually talking to the Queen about that was, yeah. Was really a surreal cool. reminder for Tabby of how far we've come. It's hard, because when you compare New Zealand to a lot of places in the world, I think, you know, yes, we are doing, doing well. It wasn't that long ago that it was completely illegal to be gay, so, yeah. What do you dream of? A world where we're all free to just be who we are and safe to do that and a lot of change a lot of things need to happen before we get there but I like to think that we're slowly making our way there and Tabby's award didn't finish at Buckingham Palace she also went to Downing Street to meet the Prime Minister and for the rest of the year she'll be studying with Cambridge University online doing a leadership course and we do of course wish her all the best